potential pirates that it's against the law and they could face stiff penalties. The thousand pound man is not the thin man yet, but he is 165 pounds lighter than two months ago. And New York's Walter Hudson won't be eating three pies tomorrow like he did last Thanksgiving. Water is all comedian Dick Gregory's diet allows. I feel a lot stronger. Uh, I don't have the headaches, the backaches, the arthritis in my leg is gone. My skin is a lot looser, much stronger. Uh, my eyes is a lot clearer, so that really helps a great deal. Norma Watson contends her son was born with serious birth defects because she was not allowed to protect herself while caring for AIDS patients at San Francisco General Hospital. Hospital policy forbids gloves and masks, except when nurses are handling patients' blood or bodily fluids. That is a complete abandonment of all that is known about infectious diseases. Watson wanted the right to wear gloves during any AIDS patient contact. The hospital refused. The terminology was that it would frighten them if the nurse walked in with a mask on. Their psychosexual social adjustment. The family contends Norma Watson was exposed to cytomegalovirus. It is common among 90% of AIDS patients and known to cause birth defects. CMV, as it's called, is also common in the general population. It's the cause of mononucleosis among teens. Watson's son faces repeated corrective skull surgeries, blindness, loss of hearing, and probable mental retardation. The family is suing for $500 million. Watson says the hospital did not follow its own rules. The warning in the infection control guidelines specifically delineates that women of childbearing age have to be immediately removed from contact with AIDS patients who massively excrete CMV. Norma Watson refuses interviews. Hospital officials also refused, but have contended that safety rules for health workers are comprehensive and are enforced. Nursing professionals say CMV is not considered a serious threat. We're talking about wearing gloves when coming in contact, when potentially coming in contact with blood and body secretions. For example, when drawing blood or when emptying a bedpan or cleaning up an incontinent patient. We're not talking about wearing gloves when walking into the room of a patient. The Watsons and the hospital have fought repeatedly over the right of workers to wear extra protective clothing. Watson says this is the kind of tragedy his wife was trying to prevent. Greg LaFave, CNN, Hercules, California. Just one Christian with a burden for people's souls. That's how a man jailed for pulling a gun on a TV sportscaster in Fresno, California describes himself. David Pretzer interrupted a KJEO sportscaster and ordered him to read a religious message over the air Friday night. Hoping to find its first road win. I will. Please don't don't do this, okay? Please don't do this. I will read this on the air. Okay. Please don't. Do it. It's nothing. It's no bad language or anything. Okay. Let's just go for it. Read it. Okay. I'm uh, doing this because I'm a Christian who believes. Uh, I'm sure many more. I'm sure many more Christianity be simplified. Excuse me. The station cut off the newscast. Police arrested Pretzer, charging him with felony false imprisonment and a misdemeanor count of brandishing a handgun. It turns out the gun was a toy. Like all the other taxi drivers in Jerusalem, Shmulek Shemtov will take you anywhere for a price. He used to worry about picking up late night fares, but not anymore. If you mess with Shemtov, he'll turn on the hot seat. The idea is devilishly simple. Take 50,000 volts of electricity, run them through the metal strips in these concealed pads, and apply as needed to the troublemaker's unsuspecting posterior. Doesn't give you the opportunity to be aggressive or to, to do things that you want to do. Hot seats were invented in these humble surroundings. The idea came to electronics technician Yoav Madar after two local cabbies were murdered. Hot seats are catching on here and in Europe, where more than 800 French cabbies now use the device, with the government subsidizing the $650 purchase price. And a French heart specialist swears they're safe. 
the Israelis hope to expand their market way beyond taxis. A new version of hot seats could turn car theft into a depressing proposition. The system allows the unsuspecting felon to enter, then turns itself on. One touch of anything metallic, and he's bound to have second thoughts, believe me, bound to have them. Hot seats are now undergoing testing in the U.S., where they're expected to go on sale within half a year. And let those with evil intentions beware. Mike Greenspan, CNN, Jerusalem. To be a teenage homosexual in the age of AIDS can mean exile to bus station bathrooms or the back rooms of Times Square. The specter of AIDS has made coming out of the closet a social death sentence to school-age sexually active gays. John just barely escaped. 18 now, his father confronted him at 16 for his effeminate behavior. He is at the age when life is thought to go on forever, yet he faced both friend and family who saw him as a pariah. When I first went into the high school, they were like, you know, look at that homo, look at that faggot, they would harass me. New York has the largest gay community in the country, and 150,000 of them are estimated to be youngsters, as young as 12 and 13. And of them, those same estimates show 45% of the young male homosexuals and 19% of the young females say they have been persecuted or harassed in school because they were perceived to be gay. The only shelter from peer and parental persecution for teenage gays in New York is this office, the Institute for the Protection of Gay and Lesbian Youth. Its founder says just last month, a boy came to him who thought he could tell his mother of his homosexuality without fear of reprisal. He told his mother, she didn't say anything, but that, knife she came, that night she came into his bedroom with a knife to cut the sin out of his heart because obviously the devil had taken him over. John says he's learned safe sex, survived coming out of the closet, and at 18 is even self-assured enough to go on television. But he is one of only a thousand gay youngsters being helped here each month. And there are 150 times that number in New York alone. Dave Monsey, CNN, New York. Like a cat with catnip. Dogs are infatuated with cars. They chase them and love to ride, especially if you let them stick their heads out the window. Maybe they like the wind rushing through their hair, or maybe they enjoy having all that power at their paws. But whatever it is that makes dogs love cars, Mariah has a bad case of it. When he gets up there, his spirits are really lifted. He just much rather ride up there than in the back seat. As soon as I get in the car and he's outside, he'll hop right on top. Good job. Okay. Let's go. He's always been a climber, and it's just one day he climbed on top of the car, and ever since then, it's, it's been a tradition. Mariah has been riding by rooftop for 12 years now, and he's quite good at it. His little paws can hold firm at speeds nearing 35 miles an hour, and never a slip, unless you count that squirrel. When he first was learning to do it, he did see a squirrel and went from the top of the car to the hood. I saw that, hit the brakes, and he just rolled right off, but he wasn't injured. He's never been injured, but the family cars have seen their fair share of abuse. I don't like it. He gets footprints all over the hood. Mrs. Griswold says she has a hard time explaining the footprints to her friends. She says it's embarrassing. Well, thank goodness her friends have never seen this. 72 cents the first window, please, for him. People say, hey, there's a dog on top of your car. So I just you know, play it off like, oh, well, thanks a lot. <laughs> Obviously, Mariah will ride the roof on any road to anywhere. Well, I take that back. Almost anywhere. In Toledo, Steve Hartman for CNN. Joanna Clark took the name Sister Mary Elizabeth this week after yeah. accepting the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience during a service at an Episcopal church in San Clemente, California. She wants to become a nun and form her own order. Sister Mary Elizabeth used to be a man. I was born with a male anatomy, but I was female gendered from birth. Mary Elizabeth, who lives with her parents in San Juan Capistrano, flew aboard combat planes in Vietnam as a chief petty officer with the Navy. She fathered a son who was now 28 years old. In 1975, she had a sex change operation, and as she puts it, has followed the Lord ever since. That I love the Lord, and that I feel I have a valid calling to follow 
uh, the calling that the Lord has given me at this time. The 49-year-old novice says that calling is to become a sister in her own religious order, which seems to be just fine with most of the Episcopalians we talk to. I, I think that um, if he has a, a religious vocation that's authentic, um, I respect the person for that. And I don't, I don't really care uh, what is his or her plumbing is. Should this woman be allowed to form her own order? Well, certainly. Certainly. Uh, the only thing is you've got to follow the rules. I see uh, no, no issues in uh, the fact that she was once a man and surgically a woman. Although Mary Elizabeth is anxious to form her own order and believes the Episcopal Church won't try to prevent her from her goal, she is aware that her quest will be long and difficult. She must first get five other women to apply for her proposed order. How does her son feel about all of this? Mary Elizabeth says she hasn't seen him in 11 years. And although she is aware she'll likely face some opposition, she says the only thing she can concern herself with now is doing the Lord's work. Okay, listen, God bless and may the Lord be with you. Greg Lamott, CNN, San Clemente, California. Hallelujah Auto Sales, praise God. That's right, Hallelujah Auto Sales. A used car lot opens seven days a week, 24 hours a day. I can testify that that's a good car. That was my mother-in-law's car. Mama Russo. And not only will they give you a deal on a used car, but they're offering what they call the deal of a lifetime, salvation. Hallelujah's owner, Carl Lombardo, says honesty and value are assured at the hands of born-again Christians. One thing they say they can't do is lie. If we cannot be a blessing to the people who buy here, we are going to close. Lombardo, who says he found Jesus several years ago, employs seven salesmen, all born-again Christians. We had the opportunity here to lead a lot of people to Jesus. And they buy a car and send us customers to Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> it's glorious. Lombardo went into this business a year ago, and sales have been so good that he recently opened a second used car lot across town and a Hallelujah repair shop. As they listen to religious music, about a dozen born-again Christian mechanics fix transmissions, adjust clutches, bump out dents, and praise the Lord. Michael Ann Beeler bought a car at Hallelujah several weeks ago. I don't feel like he's a scam artist just saying praise God. Beeler says she'd been praying about finding a good used car and found one here. I feel great about my car. I love it. And it's me. Sometimes Lombardo says people think he's nuts. He says, that's right, he's a nut screwed into the right bolt, Jesus Christ. Robert Vito, CNN, Cleveland. San Antonio police describe the scene as the work of an animal. Three teenage sisters and their teenage brother all brutally stabbed and slashed to death with knives used so forcefully that they were broken off in some of the victims. This relates to me, uh, what I remember reading about the Sharon Tate murders. It's, uh, it's, it's a bloodbath. I've never seen anything like that. A terrified girl summoned police around 4 a.m screaming that she and the others were being beaten by one of her sister's ex-boyfriends and that one sister was already dead. Then the phone went dead. Two officers were dispatched out here and uh, they found the rear door open on the trailer. They entered and, and found the bodies. Was the phone pulled out of the wall or any of the No, the started? phone jacks on the outside of the building were, were pulled loose. Minutes after police found the bodies, the mother who was away from home and the father who lived at a separate address arrived at the scene. No! No! Oh my God, I my Damn it! Got a call. <laughs> Are they all dead? Are they all dead? Yes, they're all dead. <laughs> the bodies of 19-year-old Jennifer Mann, her 17-year-old sister Shannon, 14-year-old sister Martha, and 13-year-old brother Ernest were scattered throughout the house, along with several blood-stained kitchen knives. Police said the attacker apparently broke in through a rear window. Police are still trying to determine why none of the four victims was able to escape. Bob Lozier, CNN reporting. Just another day for another law enforcement officer. Well, not quite.
There is nothing typical or average about Richard Y. or his car. Actually, car is not the right word. It's more a surveillance machine, something out of James Bond. Well, even Secret Service people have commented on my car. They, they, I've got stuff they don't have. Why is a deputy with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office and five years ago got the idea that he could make better arrests if he had better proof. So along with a complete constantly running video system and remote monitors in 10 other cars, he has a wireless mic, a convenience store monitoring system, and hidden lights everywhere. With this videotape, there's no question. The judge can see what I saw, and most importantly, the person who committed the offense can see what really happened. While we didn't see any violations with why, he has seen plenty and has kept a few in his file of tapes. In this case, the camera picked up a person blatantly running a red light. In another instance, why followed a driver who appeared intoxicated. In both cases, the tape acts as the ultimate witness and usually keeps people from contesting a ticket. Why figures he's videotaped about 1,500 violations, but he's only been called into court on eight of them, and that is far below the average officer. Even more impressive, of those eight times, all of them either pled or were found guilty. As a criminal defense attorney now, because of the video, uh, don't like it when he's on the opposite side of the table from me. Mark Ober used to be a prosecuting attorney with the county and has respect for why. Now in private practice, he's had clients arrested by him who pleaded guilty because of the taped evidence. While the sheriff's office won't be paying for the equipment soon, three more officers are now installing their own video systems. Joe Ducey for CNN in Tampa. Ten-year-old Duffy Strode is going to school on a mission to tell people to walk the straight and narrow. Duffy's already been suspended twice from school for preaching. Still, he preaches. Please pay on your fornication! Some people within earshot of Duffy are offended. I'm a Christian. I go to church, and but I don't believe in getting out calling people whoremonglers. And... Duffy's five-year-old brother Matthew and six-year-old sister Pepper also preach, but off the school grounds because the school suspended them for the same thing. The principal warned Duffy to stop preaching and come in the building. When he wouldn't, she told his mother he was suspended. Free speech is not the issue. Disruption You're a is the liar. Issue. You're a liar. If they can't shout the Gettysburg Address, then probably they can't preach if it is in that loud, screaming voice either. They he must be saved! But I can't stop it. If I stop it, then I'm in trouble with the Lord. Although some people say these children have a brilliant career ahead of them in preaching, teachers here say if the students continue their disruptive behavior, what's in their immediate future is more trouble. Mike Lane for CNN, Marion, North Carolina. On the auto racing circuit, it's been a humbling year and a half for Porsche. The West German sports car that normally dominates European and U.S. racetracks has been taking its lumps. Porsche has tied a lot of its reputation to its commitment to auto racing. Porsche has also discovered life in the slow lane in sales, off nearly 40% from a year ago. They reached a peak of almost 30,000 cars in the United States, and now they are anticipating sales of uh, 17 to 20,000 cars. Like other expensive European cars, Porsche ran into trouble because of the falling U.S. dollar that made imports a lot more expensive. With its sales so dismal, Porsche was forced to lay off more than a thousand workers at its European factories in order to reduce production and a glut of unsold cars in the U.S. Industry analysts say because of its problems, Porsche has lost some of its luster. Once a sporty status symbol, Porsche's image is being challenged by the likes of the Volvo station wagon. In this commercial, the two cars end up in a dead heat. Porsche dealers call the comparison outrageous, unfair, and counterfeit because a souped-up Volvo was pitted against what they call a regular Porsche. A 16-valve 944 could take the Volvo very easily. Volvo's commercial may be a sign of things to come. More heated competition among European luxury car makers to grab sales. And in order to stay profitable, industry analysts say the Europeans won't be offering bargains, but will move towards selling fewer and fewer cars in the U.S. for more and more dollars. The analysts also say the high prices will put a growing number of would-be buyers into Mustangs and Corvettes. Robert Vito, CNN, Detroit. This is the famed Juilliard School of Music in New York City. As an institution, it has trained some of the world's great classical musicians like Itzhak Perlman and Van Cliburn. This is Catherine Thomas, a classically trained violinist who graduated on a scholarship from Juilliard. This 
is the great Cat, and yes, she is also Catherine Thomas, but with a twist. Why did this amazing metamorphosis take place? I decided that classical music was dead! Then I decided to uh, uh, pick up where Beethoven left off, which was modernized classical music. And uh, Beethoven on speed, that's what I'm doing. She's also done this album called Cat, Worship Me or Die. And she's been featured in a current issue of People and a past issue of New Woman magazine. And I don't really care about those so-called women magazines because uh, I, don't, I don't consider myself a woman. I consider myself God. So, so th those little women magazines that, that, that think they're so intelligent or something, they're not. They're, they're just trying to stroke each other's egos all day long. I think it's, it's a bunch of crap. She has written a bunch of songs, however, with titles like Metal Massacre, Speed Death, and Satan Goes to Church. Many with lyrics that might offend Tipper Gore and the PMRC, but to Cat, that's just fine. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care if they slag me. I don't care if they love me. Do whatever you want. All I know is that 200 years ago when Beethoven was alive, he was almost brought to a mental hospital because he walked around screaming his head off, breaking pianos, and, and doing things that were totally outrageous. His music was called Noise. <laughs> Noise? Maybe. But Catherine Thomas, of whose debut classical Carnegie Hall recital the New York Times once wrote, was too furious, too overstated. The great cat has channeled that energy into something different, her own style of metal mania. Frank Rattus, CNN, New York. Sure you said we'll find you out! The last time Pepper and Matthew Strode brought their biblical message to this McDowell County Elementary School, they were suspended for five days before that three days. But that didn't discourage them. Their brother Duffy preaches outside the school grounds since he's under suspension for this kind of behavior. The principal told them to stop preaching and come in the building. You must come into the building. By staying out here, you're in violation of those school rules. Fools! Make a mock and see it! Robin Strode told the principal there's nothing in the school handbook that says her children must be in the building before 8 a.m. Now you get that handbook and you show me. Now, see, you can't take it. If they were standing out here in silent protest, they would be in violation of school rules. Principal Gorst suspended Pepper and Matthew for 10 days. It was straight out of hell. What do you think, Matthew? I think he's a fancy. School authorities say they hope they won't have to take any further corrective action against these students. They hope they'll just come back to school to learn. But some parents are in no hurry to see the student preachers return. Common is they're going to preach that they are to preach in church, that they ought not to preach in the school ground. And I don't know. To me, I think the parents ought to do something about it. And I think the parents ought to get a petition up so they can't come back to the school. In Marion, North Carolina, this is Mike Lane for CNN. The painting was carried out of the museum by enraged Chicago aldermen who said it desecrated the memory of Harold Washington. And they were taunted by angry art students who said their First Amendment rights were being violated. This is what's causing all the fuss. It depicts the late mayor in ladies' underwear, including a bra, panties, and a garter belt and stockings. It was part of a School of the Art Institute show. A student has a right to exhibit the work, and society has a right to do what it wants to do. But Art Institute President Tony Jones says that does not include taking the picture down, which is what a group of Chicago aldermen did. The students put it back up, and after voting to cut off city backing to the museum, the aldermen came back and seized the painting, and this time they brought the police. It is the police determination that the continued exhibition of the work would create a danger to public order and safety. That the painting is in poor taste is agreed to by nearly everyone concerned, but it is where poor taste meets the First Amendment where the trouble starts. It is indefensible. Constitutional scholar Dan Polsby says the councilman and the police violated First Amendment rights. All there's been is in effect a lynch mob that goes in and lynches this painting and that it is a lynch mob comprised of aldermen and police officers is can only be described as shocking. There are nudes up there. It's very offensive to a lot of people. So why don't you go upstairs and take down all the nudes also? Just to come and take the painting off the wall, I mean, it's illegal. The students want the painting put back up. They say while the work may be stupid and in bad taste, they point out that stupid and tasteless is not against the law. I'm Jeff Locke, CNN, in Chicago. When Duffy Strode preaches the gospel, people listen. Women can't keep their eyes off of men!
Duffy. It's 15 till 8. Will you come into the building and scoop? Help! Because he stayed outside and preached before school this morning, Duffy was suspended for the third time since March. A fifth grader who speaks mostly in Bible quotations. Why do you have to do it at school? Well, the Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. School officials here insist they're not against Duffy preaching. They say when children arrive in the morning, they're required to be inside the building for reasons of safety and supervision. And the blood! Playground preaching. It runs in the family. Matthew, Duffy's little brother, is only five. He's also been suspended for 18 days. He's not even old enough to read. By staying out here, you're in violation of those school rules. And their sister, Pepper, six years old, suspended for 18 days. It was straight out of hell. Robin Strode, their mother, believes what her children are doing is more important than school. Preaching the Lord comes before education any day. Marion, North Carolina is a small, sleepy town, and folks here aren't accustomed to noisy preaching children. There's a place, time and place for everything. I think the church is a place for preaching. On school nights, David Strode has his children in the pickup truck, spreading the message at the shopping center. He's a machinist and also a preacher. I can't find one case in the Bible where any Christian went against open-air preaching. Strode has hired a lawyer. He wants his children back in their classrooms. And his son, Duffy, wants to fight the school policy, too. You need a savior! You're going to hell! Like father. Ye serpent! Like son. Ann Rubenstein, NBC News, Marion, North Carolina. Us of your father! Duffy Strode, the 10-year-old preacher from Marion, North Carolina, returned to school to continue his mission. Sin is the transgression of God's law. God His effort to save people's souls is attracting a lot of attention. Sheriff's deputies were at the elementary school to make sure things didn't get out of hand. Not everyone appreciates the young preacher's efforts. Tell Ronnie that his dad's going to go to hell and all that and cuss in front of the kids and stuff and hollering in their face. Several times, the assistant principal asked Duffy to quit preaching and come in the building. Duffy, it's 15 to 8. Will you come into the building and scoop? Help! Help the Lord's to The assistant principal told Robin Strode her son was suspended for 10 days. Well, let me ask you something, Mrs. Strode. Mrs. Come into the office, please. Now, you can come out here and get on me. Let me ask you something. Coward. You got a yellow streak right up your back. You can't have public education and bring numbers of children together if you can't have rules. What? Duffy joins the absentee role of his brother and sister. They're still under suspension for this behavior. The McDowell County School Superintendent says the young children don't have to serve their suspensions and they can come back to school if they'll just quit disrupting school activities. The young preachers say they're not interested. I'd rather, um, I'd rather, um, preach and get suspended and come back to school. The Strodes attend the New Manor Baptist Church in Marion, but the pastor says the Strodes kind of preaching is doing more harm than good. The thing I, th I think is wrong with their kind of preaching is, number one, uh, they seem to come on with the wrong attitude. Uh, do you In Marion, North Carolina, this is Mike Lane for CNN. Of the United States. Why, I am not, I am not under any influence. I am not under any influence. This DUI squad calls itself the Wolf Pack. But this pack sees and records the world through a different eye. You are harassing me at this moment for no reason. In St. Petersburg, anyone pulled over on suspicion of drunk driving performs a sidewalk sobriety screen test. You may begin, sir. As they say, a picture's worth a thousand words. Uh, the video reflects a true uh, count of what occurred. Videotaping the field test may seem like a luxury, but it really has two purposes. First, it keeps a record of the field test, that it was done properly. And second, jurors can often more easily relate to a video than they can to a breathalyzer test. It is difficult for me as a defense attorney to cross-examine a videotape. Attorney Bob Paver's clients are almost always accused drunk drivers. When he goes into court and there's no video... I'm a happy guy. Absolutely. Because I have reams of cross-examination for those deputies. Hold the tip of your finger on the tip of your nose 
Videotaping in the field is expensive and time consuming. But the pictures tell the story. In St. Pete, the drunk driving conviction rate is 96%. I didn't do anything wrong. This is another driver that we got off the road tonight. That we're... This man refused to take a breathalyzer test. But his jury will have something else to consider, whether his video backs up his version of his arrest. I did nothing wrong. In St. Petersburg, Florida, Mark Strassman reporting for CNN. It was billed as a town meeting between the people of Marion, North Carolina, and the Strode family. The Strodes have created a sensation by encouraging their children to preach at school. The three youngsters, 11-year-old Duffy, 6-year-old Pepper, and 5-year-old Matthew, have been repeatedly suspended from Eastfield Elementary School for their Bible belting on campus. Local people have been outraged at the Strodes who say that children in Marion are destined for hell. During the taping of the nationally syndicated Sally Jesse Raphael show in Marion, they vented their feelings. She told my nine-year-old daughter because she wore makeup that she looked like a whore. According to the scripture, her daughter is a whore according to the scripture. She come in my house. David Strode supports and encourages his children's preaching, David and he Robert says he'll continue to do so. Uh, the Bible commands us to fight. It commands us to be steadfast and unmovable. David Strode says he'll probably send his kids to a school in another part of town in the fall. But the audience of some 200 made it overwhelmingly clear they didn't think much of Strode or his preaching youngsters. This guy, I mean, let's face it, he's a nut. Afterward, the arguments between the Strodes and townspeople continued. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, that wasn't what was said. No. Somebody, somebody got in your ears. Ironically, this is a religious community dotted with churches. But a local pastor says the Strodes may prompt Marion residents to violence. I'm afraid something might, you know, somebody might come by the house and throw something or shoot or something like that. Very possible. The Strodes remain defiant claiming God is the only one who can judge them. Jeff Levine, CNN, reporting. Neighbors and officials wanted to know, how could you live next door to this and not realize something was wrong? How could humans survive in this filth for eight years? Rotting garbage, no running water or toilets, feces smeared walls, a sickening stench. Most disturbing of all, how could anyone do this to their children? The main thing that went through my mind that there was four kids involved here, four young children, and it, uh, I got very upset about that. Four children, one and a half to 14 years old, forced to share a bunk bed, surrounded by walls smeared with their own waste. I was so sick, I could not sleep last night. I kept thinking about those children crawling and all that stuff, and especially that baby. The house is so full of garbage, you have to bend over just to keep your head from hitting the ceiling. Trash completely covered the basement stairs. Yet, despite this incredibly unsanitary setting, the children's appearance never attracted much attention. Neighbors say their parents, Mike and Deborah Eggert, kept a low profile with her supporting the family. She's an LPN nurse or RPN whatever, and she could live in something like this. I've only talked to her twice, and she's just like, she's not on the same level as a normal person. The intolerable conditions led police to investigate the Eggerts, whose children were taken to a foster home. Meantime, condemnation proceedings continue. We'll just back a garbage truck up to the backyard and uh, start raking and shoveling and pitchforking the stuff out as best we can. If only it were that simple to clean the slate for the children who've lived in this misery most of their lives. Uh, people versus Mary Francis Bergamas. 29-year-old Mary Frances Bergamasco pleaded innocent this morning to child abuse charges. Last week, she painted her son's face blue, put an egg carton on his nose, and a sign on his chest that read, I'm a dumb pig, look at me squeal. Ugly is what you become each time you lie and steal. She then tied him to a small wooden bench and made him sit in the front yard of their apartment complex. Her son is seven years old. The neighborhood children found him first. And we came over here, I came over here and I saw the cedar bench. And then I, we were looking at him and they, he was sitting there with his hands tied and he was crying. It felt sad to see him out there tied up and everything. And had this stuff around his mouth and it looked like he couldn't even breathe. One of the neighborhood parents saw what was going on and called police. They arrested the mother on child abuse charges. Police took the little boy to a foster home. 
In a written statement to police, the mother said the punishment was intended to teach the boy a lesson after two weeks of thievery, during which he stole $25 worth of baseball cards, $6 in cash, an earring, a belt buckle, and another child's toy. After each theft, the mother says her son lied about what he had done. Today at the courthouse, the mother's boyfriend says the little boy was out of control. Painting his face, uh, it was just her way of punishment. She tied her hands as loose as these bracelets are on my wrist right here. That's as, that's as tight as she tied. The only reason why she did that so she the kid wouldn't pull the nose off. It is not the first time child abuse investigators have heard of Mary Bergamasco. Four months ago, Union City Police investigated her on a report of child abandonment. Police issued two warrants for her arrest when she didn't show up in court. In this latest incident, her preliminary hearing is scheduled for July 18th. In Hayward, California, Chuck Coppola for CNN. The makers of the Suzuki Samurai apparently are feeling the aftershocks of a negative consumer rating. The American Suzuki Motor Company has released its sales figures for June. Samurai sales were down 70%. That was the month the Consumers Union ruled the vehicle unsafe, saying it tends to tip over under certain conditions. Suzuki calls the testing procedure biased and inaccurate. In Madison, Wisconsin, a man charged with hostage taking has been ordered to undergo psychiatric examination before he can return to court. Stephen Jones went out of control yesterday during his initial court appearance, leaping over two rows of benches to attack some television cameramen, shouting, kill, kill, kill. No one was injured in the fray. It began with a tip about possible animal abuse at this house in Los Angeles. By the time animal control officers were through searching the house, 37 dogs, 27 cats, and eight birds had been recovered. We've had to destroy, um, euthanize all but one cat because of leukemia, panleukopenia, which is respiratory, uh, upper respiratory viruses, and uh, just uh, severe disease throughout the entire colony of cats. All of the animals were taken to the city's animal shelter for treatment. Many were found in filth said to be four inches deep. Some were malnourished, some had hair loss, and others were diseased. One officer said the birds in the house were picking at the cockroaches. He called it disgusting and said there were a number of plastic bags containing carcasses. I walked by the house and you could see maggots and you could smell a horrible smell like dead animals. It's terrible, and it took this long, unfortunately, before something was done. Neighbors say they had complained before about the piles of garbage and the noise generated by fighting animals inside the house, but the situation never got better. Officials are investigating the alleged mistreatment and are anxious to answer the one puzzling question, why? Jim Barnett, CNN reporting. This is the family that has sadly come to be known as San Jose's Garbage Pail Kids. They are the Jacobsons. Last week they were evicted from their modest rented home in San Jose when authorities found tons of rotting garbage infested with rodents in their home. We do admit that there was much that should really have been discarded. Was much of it was a matter of neg negligence and procrastination. The Jacobsons, newly contrite and anxious to please their highly annoyed neighbors, are now homeless and hoping someone will believe they have learned their lesson. That red sign on the house indicates the house is condemned. As far as the Jacobsons are concerned, they've been condemned too. Right now they're living in a county homeless shelter where counselors are trying to teach them what is proper behavior for the time that they're out on their own again. They're good people. They're for the most part, they keep the laws. So what do you do? Do you lock people up because they collect garbage? They feel the need is that we have to be disciplined in, in, our, our, in our nature to uh, not to be too uh, excess, excessively um, uh, uh, tre treasuring of our goods. The house that Jacobson's once occupied is empty and will likely be demolished to finally eliminate a rotting odor. And we asked them about the garbage. Why did you keep this stuff what were you doing and they said no we don't we don't keep, gar keep garbage we don't collect garbage it's stuff that people use it's things that people shouldn't be throwing away that's how they saw it the Jacobsons are perplexed about what to do next they need another place to live and they promise they will take out the garbage every week 
And as far as the city is concerned, they will follow our trail. Therefore, I would like to say, come on in, folks. We have nothing to hide anymore. <laughs> in San Jose, California, John Gibson for CNN. The street preaching Strode family children started the new school year Monday just like they ended the old one. They defied officials at the elementary school they attend by preaching on school property. I hope you've come to go to school today. It's good to see you again. Marriage is horrible and all! It's a bit undefiled by whore mothers and the daughters! I'm an adult, and I have trouble when a child this, this says to an adult who's an authority figure in the school or in the community to say to that person, you go to hell. Duffy Strode was suspended for 10 days. Nothing new for the children. All three were suspended repeatedly last school year for preaching on school property. Their behavior infuriated townspeople. School officials had sheriff's deputies on hand Monday, fearing mob violence might occur when the Strodes appeared. It never happened, but there was anger. Because well, I think the man's crazy, and he won't teach me, and he's going to get it. School officials here consider it a simple case of children disrupting classes. But the Strodes say it is a case of communists and infidels trying to prevent their children from speaking God's word. Now what they're going to try to drill into these children's head this year is that Jesus Christ was a liar. It did not start in the garden with Adam and Eve. Strode says his children have a First Amendment right to preach at school, but acknowledges there's not much he can do about the suspensions unless he files a lawsuit. But he's been unemployed since May and so far hasn't drummed up much support for his Old Testament hellfire and damnation style. Larry Lamott, CNN, Marion, North Carolina. This 77 Mercury Cougar really handles like a dream. A bad dream, that is, and was a nightmare for the car's owner, 39-year-old Edward Brown of Akron. All right, take your head off. Now keep your feet on the All right, keep your head Brown was getting gas at this Ohio station on Hawkins Avenue. Somehow, the car managed to get into reverse without Brown, made its way through the driveway and out onto Hawkins Avenue. Amazingly, it didn't hit anyone or anything. Somehow, the front wheels locked up, and for about a half hour, the car was doing laps in the middle of one of the busiest intersections in the city, stopping traffic and leaving police wondering what to do. Finally, our hero arrived. I used my police vehicle with a, uh, a pickup truck with a bumper, and I rammed it. It was funny, but it could have been a dangerous situation. So what's the charge? Well, not speeding. Police clocked the car at 17 miles an hour on their radar gun. It's a 25 zone here. What about failure to control? No, he wasn't in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Brown would be cited for leaving a motor vehicle unattended with the motor running. But bad turned to worse for Brown. It turns out there was a warrant out for his arrest for trafficking food stamps. So as the car was towed away to a local garage, Brown was towed to jail. Todd Morgano, Akron. Gay activists are not the kind of people you normally see around the courthouse in a town like Arcadia. Until we address AIDS as a medical, not a moral issue, we will be involved in a circular dialogue of victim blaming. I think you're all sick in the head. Many locals made it clear the group's protest of AIDS-related discrimination and just their presence were not welcome. It's a bad thing when you let stuff like that come into your town, get on your public grass, use your public facilities. But Arcadia is more than just a small town in Florida to these lesbians and gays. To them, it represents some of the worst fears by AIDS victims who are shunned by fellow man. Just one year ago, townspeople fought to keep these three little boys, the Ray brothers, from attending the local elementary school. Each a hemophiliac, each exposed to AIDS, 
After bomb threats and death threats, fire swept through their home and the Ray family finally left town. Viruses do not discriminate people. Tell the truth. That is the truth, you ignoramus. The protesters told the crowd 52 people die each day from AIDS. But the rally may have been more of a sideshow to most who came to watch instead of listen. In Arcadia, Florida, Elaine Fitzgerald for CNN. 11-year-old Duffy, 6-year-old Matthew, and 7-year-old Pepper Strode won't be preaching at the Eastfield Elementary School in McDowell County. The children were suspended several times for this behavior, and their parents decided not to send them back. David Strode has applied for the home school option. Strode feels the children can learn what they need to learn at home. It uh, frees my children from all the satanic influences that have been uh, implemented into the public school systems. Right now, this is what Duffy is learning at home, how to get rid of persistent callers. Because of their suspensions, the children have already spent a lot of time at home, so they're ready for home teaching. But some people in this community wonder what kind of teachers the children will have. I think they're nuts. <laughs> they're squirrely. As that boy of mine says, the, the elevator don't go all the way to the top. <laughs> The long-suffering principal of Eastfield seems we'll grateful for the Strode's here. decision. We are back to normal. Things are quiet, operating smoothly, and the classes are going on well. David Strode has a high school degree, so he says he's qualified to teach. Homeschoolers are usually smarter than the, than the children at the school. School board representatives will be visiting this new private schoolhouse just as soon as the Strodes begin teaching classes here. The state wants to make sure the children are learning in a manner the state deems appropriate. In Marion, North Carolina, this is Mike Lane for CNN. No parking, no standing, no cat calls. <laughs> You've perfected that over the years, huh? Uh, such a little boy, you know. In an attempt to discourage men from whistling and making kissing sounds at women. Certainly the kissing sounds are ones that go like this. A New York artist has won permission to post signs around Lower Manhattan aimed at taming wolves, the human type who make lewd or rude comments. The ones that are, that are the most upsetting are the ones that are unrepeatable. They're sort of verbal pornography. They're At her own expense, Alona Granite put up signs like this one on the pedestrian walkway of the Brooklyn Bridge. A lot of women think the comments they get from men are no laughing matter. I feel disgusted. People call their mother. That's why I wear big clothes, see? You get like 20 guys all at the same time. It's not fun. I think men will be men, you know? Doesn't bother you. Doesn't bother me. The anti-cat call signs bothered some local officials. Only the community board governing Lower Manhattan gave Granite the go-ahead to post the placards. But when the women tried to put their sign up across from a construction site, the comments were anything but constructive. A crowd gathered and someone tore down the sign. You should put it up as if you antagonize the men even more. There's no need for that. This is not the way that women will like it. Most of them are embarrassed and uncomfortable. One of the no cat call signs eventually ended up being waved from the building under construction to cheers and jeers from the crowd below. Every guy should have a right to whistle at a beautiful girl. Time yes! <laughs> and Alona Granite's face got even stonier when someone let the air out of her tires. The construction company agreed to fix Granite's flats, but offered no guarantees that male instincts will become extinct. Chinimo, CNN, New York. Looks like some good waves, Rocco. You can tell right away Rocky is no ordinary dog. For starters, most dogs at the beach don't wear wetsuits or bring along a boogie board. And even though dogs are supposed to be off limits at this La Jolla beach, today lifeguards are making an exception because, as I said, Rocky is no ordinary dog. Excellent. 
best ride I've, I've ever seen, I think. How long has that dog been doing that? Rocky began surfing five years ago, and according to his owner, this is just one of the water sports he loves. Uh, he likes to sailboard, he jet skis, he water skis real good. Yeah, I still don't know how he did that. When people see that Rocky actually surfs by himself, most can't believe their eyes, and many wonder how he's able to do it. Just like all the other guys out there, balance. Balance and skill, I guess. I don't know, maybe he's just a reincarnated surfer, who knows. <laughs> to give you an idea of what a hot dog Rocky really is, he's surfing wind and sea today. This is one of the most famous surfing beaches in the country, and waves can easily get up to 15 feet high. And after a great ride, Rocky loves a good roll in the sand, then some attention to let him know he's the most popular dog on the beach. He's <laughs> bad dog. Deborah St. George for CNN in San Diego. Probably be singing with the Beach Boys next. We did a rookie to deal out across the town. Defensive extra point. It counts for two. So. Sunday afternoon at John Cunett's house, and it's anything but quiet. Yes, but acceptable. <laughs> Welcome to the home with the most television sets in America, or so says the National Enquirer. There are 18 of them here, none smaller than 19 inches. And sometimes, John Cunett watches all of them at once. That's right, but of course you can get cross-eyed too in the process. But I haven't tonight, I'm going for an examination next month. <laughs> He's a guy who watches TV because he can't bear the thought of missing anything. And with six TVs in his living room, there isn't much that gets by. I follow the Rams. There's the Raiders. There's the char Chargers, definitely. When you have Quaker Oats... Uh, Sunday is my best day because Brinkley comes on, too. Discussion and Face the Nation comes on. Come, and then Meet the Press. And then there's a documentary at 8 o'clock on PBS. And then the movies comes on, Channel 39, we'll have a movie or two. If it's any good, I'll watch it. And what he can't watch in his living room, he watches upstairs in his bedroom, where there are four TV sets. But John Cunett is a little embarrassed by the notoriety. He never intended to become known as the man with the most TV sets in America. But once he began watching, he knew he was hooked. I have my eye on now one with 500 resolutions. <laughs> the final few seconds of Debbie Kilalea's life were captured on blurry videotape that was shot from a camera inside the car that ran her down and killed her. While the 19-year-old defendant sat motionless and courtroom observers cringed and cried, that videotape was played on a television monitor in a Newport Beach, California courtroom. Also in the courtroom were Kilalea's family and friends who watched the videotape for the first time since the September 1st incident. Eyewitnesses say the 37-year-old Kilalea was with her two young sons walking in an alleyway toward her house. Suddenly, a car turned into the alley at a high rate of speed. They say Kilalea pushed her sons behind a wall just seconds before the car slammed into her. That was followed by the screams of her children. She got tossed head, um, tossed head to feet. How high did you see her go up? Uh, it's about as high as houses. Testimony revealed the driver, Danny Ornelas, had been surfing and drinking a combination of rum and malt liquor with friends just prior to the incident. A friend of his in the passenger seat had a video camera turned on when Kilalea was hit. It's an incredible piece of evidence. It's a horrifying thing to listen to. Uh, it was on uh, for moments up before the collision, um, and I think it speaks for itself. Ornelas, accused of deliberately trying to run down Kilalea, remains jailed on $250,000 bond. He's pleading innocent. Greg Lamott, CNN reporting. Now revealing on desktop screens across America, hardcore software. Mac Playmate.
Leading the plunge, Mac Playmate, the best known and most controversial. Through computer animation, the reclining figure of a woman is undressed and fondled by a disembodied hand manipulated by the computer operator. Chuck Farnham distributes the program. Guys are, you know, looking for it everywhere in their local computer stores, calling me day and night. The program is popping up mostly at offices and schools. That infuriates the National Organization for Women. And certainly seeing uh, one of your co-workers play with this game where a woman is repeatedly raped by various means or whatever certainly is uh, demeaning and offensive to women. With a flick of a PC mouse, anyone of any age with a PC and a phone line can dial up hundreds of hard and softcore porn images, most copied from adult magazines. Straight sex, lesbian, gay, or otherwise. The latest is called Sounds of Susan. Oh, yeah. We have a woman on staff who creates them during the throes of passion. She records herself. You can have them customized with your husband's wife's name in them. Apple Computer says it wants no part of the animated controversy. Same with the Chicago company that developed the technology used in the program. The Apple Macintosh is the first of a generation of computers to feature animation and sound simulation. Most agree this is not what Apple Computer founder Steve Jobs had in mind. He left the computer out there for everybody to play with. We're playing with it. Computer columnist David Morgenstern says PC porn was inevitable. It's in everything. So it's, uh, it's in television, uh, print. It's computers, why not? This is not about having sex between two equal people. This is about objectifying and taking a woman's humanity away, turning her into an object. The irony of this controversy is that the fuss has sent demand for the products skyrocketing. A month ago, Farnham says, sales were zero. Greg Lefebvre, CNN, San Jose. 27-year-old John Bellow of Homewood has been charged with drunken driving and reckless homicide in the death of a pedestrian in Palos Heights. Police say Bellow's car struck 33-year-old Napoleon Sanchez as he was walking along Palatine Road this morning. Sanchez was hit so hard he flipped over the car and crashed through the rear window, landing in the back seat. Police say Bellow drove on another five minutes with Sanchez in the back before he even realized what happened. I didn't have the pictures as proof. Some of these stories might seem hard to swallow. People are moving inside. This guy even tried to worm his way into winning tickets for a Denver Broncos football game. Now, folks in Turkey may not be big on football, but they'd walk a mile for a camel, make that a camel wrestling match, hump to hump combat, and may the best camel pin. But if you think camel wrestling in Turkey is weird, how about turkey bowling in Fort Lauderdale? 1988 was the year three British artists were framed in New York. The living paintings they called themselves hung by harnesses for as long as seven hours at a stretch. And then there was the New York artist who launched a crusade against cat calls. In an effort to curb men who disturb women, Alona Granite began posting no cat calls signs. But when she tried erecting one near a Wall Street construction site, workmen tore it down and taunted the artist with it from above. I think every guy should have a right to whistle at a beautiful girl. Back yes! Back right. And the battle of the sexes turned into guerrilla warfare when someone let the air out of granite's tires. Instead of curbing male instincts, a check cashing store in Fort Lauderdale tried to unleash them by going topless in 1988, making this an establishment where more than checks bounce. This is the first time I can see a topless girl in I money. Miss America 1988 got money and lots of exposure when she won the title, but little did she expect to get questions that would make Gary Hart blush and even other reporters groan. Have you had sex yet or are you waiting to get married? 1988 was the year a Texas couple took the plunge and tied the knot in a dome that enabled bride and groom to breathe 13 feet underwater. And it was in 1988 that we brought you Rocky, the surfing dog. 1988 was the year the man from Britain's transport ministry found out a picture really is worth a thousand words. He was trying to convince a reporter that nothing was wrong with a certain accident-prone English road. I will not accept that it's a highly dangerous road. Maybe he would have if he had a rear-view mirror. The Central Reserve safety fencing will go ahead. Yes. Perfect example. <laughs> no one was hurt.
And so we rear-end another year of odds, ends, and trends. Ginimo, CNN, New York. Jim and Tammy Baker are back. The TV ministers returned to the air today for the first time in two years. They told viewers to keep the faith, and they made no direct appeals for money. They talked about what caused their downfall. Well, the last year we were at Heritage USA, almost six million people came to visit. And uh, I think the devil was mad. I think something so wonderful and beautiful was being built that the devil was mad. And then when we broke ground for the largest church ever built in the history of the world, I think the devil said, this is it. I think I've got to smash Jim and Tammy Baker. Well, you know, Jim, too many marriages were being put back together. Too many babies were being saved. Too many street people's were, their lives were being totally turned around. Too many people were getting saved. I think the devil was just angry. I do, too. <laughs> but he's not the winner. <laughs> A mountain so high that just won't move away. The Jim and Tammy show originated in the Baker's borrowed home in North Carolina. They estimate six stations carried the program. And their prime at PTL, the show could be seen on about 100.